In this video, we are going to learn about how to solve the most difficult Hardy Weinberg numericals. And you know that most of the time teachers always teach you P plus Q raised to the power 2. But in this video, we are going to learn how to solve difficult numericals used for a trinomial equation that is P plus Q plus R whole square or P plus Q raised to the power 4. And if these questions come in the examination, very few students are about to solve them, right? So moving ahead and let's have a look at the basic concept. Now, everybody knows that if we look at the concept of hardy weinberg equilibrium, that rule is basically valid for most of the deployed individuals, right? And when we say deployed individuals, what, we, what are we exactly referring to? That for a particular character, for a particular character, we are considering two alleles, right? Just giving one example, let's say a dominant allele and a recessive allele, right? So we are actually considering two alleles, right? For a particular character. And most of the time, the rule that you have heard is valid for these conditions, right? So if we look at the basic hardy weinberg equilibrium rule, when we write P plus Q equal to one, we are referring to a condition, something called as allelic frequency equilibrium, right? So we refer to a condition known as allelic frequency, allelic frequency equilibrium, right? Where small p refers to the allelic frequency of dominant allele, the allelic frequency of the dominant allele, dominant allele, while small q refers to the allelic frequency of allelic frequency of the recessive allele, right? I hope that is clear to everyone, right? But when we write p plus q whole square is equal to 1, this becomes a modified equation which is called as genotypic frequency equilibrium, right? So this is called as the genotypic frequency equilibrium genotypic frequency equilibrium and in genotypic frequency equilibrium if we expand this particular thing we are going to write that p square plus 2 pq plus q square is equal to 1 right and i hope everybody understands in this particular aspect p square refers to the genotypic frequency the genotypic frequency of the homozygous dominant individual suppose i am still talking about these two alleles which are referred to then it is the genotypic frequency of capital a capital a which is represented by p square q square represents the genotypic frequency remember not allelic frequency but genotypic frequency of small a small a individual and this entire 2 pq fraction refers to the genotypic frequency of genotypic frequency of the heterozygous individual right so i'm not here to teach you the basics this is just a quick recap of what you already have learned that for deployed individual and the case where we are considering obviously the concept of deployed means that there are two alleles for a respective character which are there right and we have two sets of equilibrium as a part of our Weinberg equilibrium called as allelic frequency equilibrium and genotypic frequency equilibrium now moving ahead suppose if somebody asks us a difficult question how to apply the concept of hardy weinberg equilibrium if it is not a case of just two alleles if somebody says that it is a case of multiple alleles so how to move ahead in case of multiple alleles right so multiple alleles let us let us suppose that i am giving you an example so let us say suppose that there are three different alleles a1 a2 and a3 for a particular character right so there are let's suppose three alleles for a specific character right and uh, obviously we have to also tell that what is the dominance relationship between these three alleles right so let's say a1 is the most dominant of all is the most powerful in terms of expression while this a3 is the a3 is the least dominant right a3 is the least dominant so a3 is the least dominant now the thing is that what we have to consider over here is that when we are applying the case of multiple allelism 
how to apply the concept of allylic frequency equilibrium or the hardy weinberg principle right so let us suppose that the examiner is going to give you three independent values of their frequency right so let us suppose that the examiner tells you that the allylic frequency of the three allele are represented by the symbol of p q and r right so now the hardy weinberg equilibrium cannot just be written as p plus q raised to the power 2 this thing would be solved by using something called as a trinomial expansion right so this is going to be solved by using something called as trinomial expansion where trinomial expansion equation can be written as p plus q plus r raised to the power 2 right so obviously if we look at the hardy weinberg equilibrium applied at the scale of allylic frequency equilibrium you can simply write p plus q plus r is equal to 1 which is called as the allylic frequency equilibrium right so this would be considered as what allylic frequency equilibrium but if you look at this particular thing obviously you are not talking about allylic frequency equilibrium anymore you are talking about the genotypic frequency equilibrium right so we are talking about the genotypic frequency equilibrium and the expansion for this thing is going to be something like p square plus q square plus r square plus 2pq plus 2pr plus 2qr obviously this sum equals to 1 because p plus q plus r was also equal to 1 right now considering what all these symbols stand for p square must be denoting the allylic frequency the allylic frequency the sorry the genotypic frequency of the individuals who are having the genotype a1 a1 right so a1 a1 genotypic frequency similarly q square is going to represent the genotypic frequency of a2 a2 individuals r square is going to represent the genotypic frequency of a3 a3 individuals right so it is going to represent the genotypic frequency of a3 a3 individuals 2pq is going to represent remember do not leave the digit in front this entire 2pq just like i get, told you the basic concept which you already know uh, nobody needs to teach you that so 2pq is going to represent the genotypic frequency of individuals who are having the genotype a1 a2 right 2pr the entire thing is going to represent the genotypic frequency so 2pr right so the uh, genotypic frequency of a1 a3 individual and 2qr if you look at so qr is going to represent for a2 a3 individuals right so this is how you apply a trinomial expansion in case of a multiple allelism or multiple alleles right most of the time these three values small p small q and small r these would be given to you in the examination and accordingly you would be asked to calculate these specific numbers right i hope that makes sense to you in this particular case now moving ahead we have another important aspect where we can be asked to apply a complex equation called as p plus q raised to the power 4 and this was one of the difficult question which was asked in CSIR examination the next thing is to understand about how to apply a particular equation which we call as p plus q raised to the power 4 and very rarely such question have been asked in the exams and if such questions have been asked in the examination then it is very difficult and very few people have been able to solve that particular question now the question says that the fruit color of wild solenum nigrum is controlled by two alleles of a particular gene right so what are the two alleles so the two alleles are capital a and small a right the frequency is given p and q obviously p and q ka sum is one which is clearly visible that means hardy weinberg equilibrium is followed then they say that in a field a tetraploid genotype was discovered right so what do we exactly mean by a tetraploid genotype so if i say a diploid genotype which most of the plants are there if i say diploid right so diploid means two basic sets of chromosome two sets or two basic sets of the chromosome right when i say 3n 
फोर एन सिक्स एन ऑल ऑफ दीज एक्सिस्ट इन प्लांट कॉमनली एंड दे आर बींग रेफर टू एज पॉलिपल राइट लाइक टू एन यू रेफर टू एज अ डिप्लॉइड इंडिविजुअल टू बेसिक सेट ऑफ क्रोमोलोम पॉलिप्लॉइड आर लाइक थ्री बेसिक सेट फोर बेसिक सेट सिक्स बेसिक सेट्स एंड ऑल राइट वेर थ्री एन इज लाइक ट्रिप्लॉइड फोर एन इज लाइक टेट्राप्लॉइड टेट्राप्लॉइड एंड द सिक्स एन बींग रेफर टू एज something called as a hexaploid right uh, i can teach you the basic of ploidy also actually it's uh, never written as 2n 3n 4n you will be taught like uh, 2n is equal to 2x uh, is called as a diploid 2n is equal to 3x is called as a a, a, a triploid 2n is equal to 4x and so on but for simplicity i'm using this concept right so number of basic sets of cro chromosome that we are referring to right so what the question is exactly telling us that it has told us that there are two sets of alleles involved but they have found a tetraploid genotype for a particular uh, wild plant and they found that five distinct genotypes were possible in the population with all four chromosome position having capital a with three of them having capital a last one of them having small a two of them having uh, capital a another two having small a then only one having capital a all rest chromosome having small a at that position and then all position all four positions having small a now the question is very interesting the question says that assuming that the population follows hardy weinberg principle why they are telling us to assume because polyploids ke liye hardy weinberg equilibrium was never proposed originally it was always proposed for a diploid system right so what we are looking at is that we have to assume that hardy weinberg principle is applicable and assuming that same allelic frequency as that of diploid population so whatever was the value of p and q same p and q applies for this particular system also then they are asking you if you find out that there are 1000 plants in a population of this tetraploid uh, plants what will be the ratio of this genotype is to this genotype is to this genotype is to this genotype now this is a very interesting question if this question was belonging to a diploid system a diploid individual system what we refer to as 2n then you would have been applying p plus q raised to the power 2 but since the question is now jumping to the concept of the tetraploid which is referred to as the 4n we will have to apply p plus q raised to the power 4 if question let's suppose in future in future examination uh it goes to a hexaploid what will you do you will consider obviously for a 6n just look for the mathematical expansion of p plus q raised to the power 6 and you will be able to solve it but the question going to this level will be very uh, having very less chances because this is a very complex equation but believe me the way i teach you p plus q raised to the power 4 you can obviously solve the rest of the things by yourself right now understanding how to basically solve such a question where we have to apply p plus q raised to the power 4 right so uh, what we have to actually do is to understand about the expansion of p plus q raised to the power 4 so if you look at this expansion it goes something like this p4 plus q4 plus 4 p3q plus 6 p square q square plus 4 pq3 right so we have p4 we have q4 we have 4 p3q 6 p square q square and 4 pq3 now if we look carefully at this thing so uh, obviously this these when when you are writing any equation like this thing obviously you are not talking about allelic frequency equilibrium you are talking about what genotypic frequency equilibrium right so you are definitely talking about genotypic frequency equilibrium so uh, if you look at p4 so p4 definitely will uh, will be the genotypic frequency of any individual who is having this genotype right q4 should be for any individual who is having this genotype this entire number right do not leave the 4 in front this entire number must be representing right so 4 p3q must be representing for an individual who is having 3 capital a one small a this entire number right 6p square q square 
should be representing for an individual who is having two capital A and two small A. This is coming from here, right? So this is coming from here. And for PQ3, similarly, for any individual who is having a genotype of one single A and three small A, right? So the genotypes are quite clear to us now. Please remember one important concept uh, that obviously the examiner is asking us to find out the number of individual, right? He is not asking us that what genotypic frequency belongs to a particular genotype. So number of individuals, number of individuals of a particular genotype, right? Of a particular genotype. How do we actually calculate that, right? So number of individual of a particular genotype, it is equal to the genotypic frequency of that genotype right genotypic frequency multiplied by total individuals or total plants in this case which is given thousand to you right so genotypic frequency multiplied by total obviously you know that a absolute number of anything according to mathematics is going to be what uh, the number of individuals uh, is always equal to frequency of anything multiplied by total if i say 50 percent of uh, 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 students in a class are boys of a hundred student class right so obviously 50 percent of 100 is the number of boys so if i say frequency 0.5 was the frequency the frequency of anything multiplied by total uh, category uh, number is going to be called as what the number of uh, uh, exact number of uh, individual belonging to that particular category right so the question is now clear in front of us and now we shall be ready uh, with our answer soon, right? So if you look at our answer, so P4 frequency should be uh, So P4 what we are actually looking at uh, uh, the P4 frequency is already clear Sorry, not the frequency, but the number of individual. So the number of P4 individual is going to be uh, 0.8 Raised to the power 4. That's what P4 is telling you because small p small p is 0.8 and small q is 0.2, right? So P raised to the power 4 multiplied by 1000 and uh, this number approximately comes out to be 409. I'm highlighting these numbers. Similarly for Q4, uh, it should be uh, uh, it should be for Q4 uh, something like uh, uh, 0.2 raised to the power 4 into multiplied by 1000. When you solve this thing, this would come out to 1.9 uh, something or approximately 2, right? If you look at 4 uh, P3Q, right? So uh, please don't leave this number in front. So this digit 4 multiplied by P3, right? So 0.8 raised to the power 3 multiplied by 0.2. Once again, this will also come out equal to be 409. Exactly uh, same. So 4 into uh, 0.8 raised to the power 3 into this thing. Obviously, don't forget to multiply by 1000, right? Then uh, we have 6 uh, P square Q square, right? So 6 multiplied by 0 0.8 ka square multiplied by 0 0.2 ka square multiplied by 1000. Never leave this uh, total plant uh, multiplication, right? So 1000 has to be multiplied every time in the end because that's the total number and you're multiplying any frequency with that. When you solve this thing, approximately 154 and uh, uh, 4... Uh, P3, PQ3, sorry, 4 multiplied by uh, 0.8 multiplied by 0.2 raised to the power 3 multiplied by 1000. Uh, this should come out to be approximately 26. So the answer is 409 should be uh, 409 um, because uh, the uh, the examiner has uh, uh, definitely asked us. So let's, let's go back to the question once and to see that what he has actually asked. So uh, they have actually uh, asked us uh, the frequency of uh, AAA, uh, this all four times A. So this was 409 and then uh, this was also 409. When we calculated, this is 154. Uh, this was uh, somewhere equivalent to 26 and this was equivalent to 2. So 409 is to 409 is to 154 is to 26 is to 2. And that goes with the option number A. So if you can solve this kind of question in hardy Weinberg equilibrium, then you're definitely going to solve anything which is going to come in future, right? I wish all of you best of luck for your future endeavors. And that's all for today from my side. Thank you and have a good day.